Sauropods are known to both paleontologists and laymen alike as being the long necks, and rightfully so given how extreme some of them got in size, some of which will be covered soon in upcoming videos, although there are of course with any group of animals, exceptions, and there is one that essentially operates in the complete opposite way. The holotype and so far only known specimen of said animal was collected from an exposure of fluvial sandstone through a period of erosion within the Canadian Calcaro Formation in Chibut's province, Argentina, dating to the late Jurassic after a shepherd by the name of Daniel Messer was out searching for some lost sheep and noticed the fossils, a rather lucky find. Though quite incomplete due to apparent erosion losses many years before its discovery, a heartening thing to take into account in the field of paleontology. Several skeletal elements were recovered from paleontologists who later arrived, mainly including much of the animal's spine, ribs, and part of the legs and hips, which was enough to diagnose them as a new genus. Brachytrochelopan messi, their name meaning Messer's short neck shepherd god, was made in reference to both the unusually small neck of the specimen, as well as Pan, the Greek shepherd god, after Daniel Messer and his family who found the specimen. Brachytrochelopan was a small animal by sauropod standards, standing at about 2.7 metres in height and being a total length of about 11.6 metres and weighing about 5 tonnes, and being further strange in that they were found to have a very short neck, which was approximately 40% shorter than other decryosaurids, the family to which they fall under, which are already known to generally be short necks and small. They were initially viewed to be an adult animal due to the high degree of fusion presence between the newer arches and their respective centra, along with some other traits, although more recent research has indicated that this wasn't the case through neurocentral sutures being visible in the pre sacral region, and that the holotype found was not yet fully grown, although was likely to not have got much larger given what type of sauropods they were. Decryosaurids fall under the larger superfamily, Diplodocoidea, and are the sister group to the Diplodocidae, which includes animals like the more well-known Diplodocus and Brontosaurus, and are differentiated from them by the already as mentioned smaller body size and shorter necks, and to key outliers, with Brachytrochelopan with their even shorter necks, showing that Decryosaurids were clearly specialised to fill in ecological niches that were not being exploited by the longer necks relatives. To make their necks longer, sauropods evolved either an increase in the number of cervical or neck vertebrae, or extending the length of the ones of those already present, and more often the case, both. In the wackiest of cases, neck length can reach almost 400% of the length of the dorsal vertebral column, with Brachytrochelopan, in contrast, having a neck that was only around 75% that of theirs, with it, as a comparison, being 123% in their closest relative, Decryosaurus, and 136% in Amargosaurus. This has some big implications for their ecology, because as well as this, the morphology of their cervical neural arches has been found to be significantly restricted in terms of dorsal flexion due to their tall and anteriorly swept neural spines, meaning they would have been among the few sauropods to have actually had a horizontal neck posture, as was once thought commonplace, among many of their relatives. When articulated, they were found to actually droop far below horizontal, with the heads being nearly at ground level, meaning that they would have likely been specialised to a diet of plants growing at heights of between 1 and 2 metres, placing them in a low browsing niche, similar to iguanodontine ornithopods, which were absent from the sediments where these sauropods were found. Thus, as indicated through Brachytrochelopan, sauropods weren't just a one-trick dinosaur group, and show a great deal of adaptive plasticity than they are often given credit for, when what most know are the far larger and more impressive looking macronarians and their relatives, so I'm really glad to share more about these peculiar animals here. Following this video, I'll be covering the other end of the extreme regarding neck lengths of these animals, going over the titanic, Shinjan Tyson, which ends up looking like walking garden eels with how ridiculous they look. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.